Hey everybody, welcome to our favorite frontier, the only Star Trek podcast on the internet, hosted by me and Nick. Hey Nick. Hey Alex, how are you? I am doing well. We're talking about Star Trek The Next Generation. Specifically, we're talking about the episode 11001001. Captain's log, stardate 41365.9. The Enterprise has been ordered to Starbase 74 in orbit around Tarsus 3. A routine maintenance check of all systems will be made, certain upgrades completed, including the holodeck with which we've had problems. I anticipate a glowing report. The ship has performed magnificently beyond anyone's expectations. Nick, what did you think of 11001001? Honestly, it wasn't as. I mean, I keep. I feel like as we uh, go on, I'm going to be saying this more often. But it wasn't as bad as previous episodes. Honestly, this one actually kept me engaged. I kind of knew what was going on. I kind of figured what was going to happen. But you know, I found this episode to be entertaining, even though it's not as good as other television. I would agree. I I didn't remember. I didn't remember much. But I, when I got when I got here, I remember the scene where Riker plays trombone. I didn't yes. remember that much. But I, I also, the minute I watched this episode, I saw these little green, these little purple aliens with the big heads, and wa- looking at the way they talk, I was like, oh no. But I agree. I was actually like, kind of, kind of into it. Like, yeah, I, I, they're using that holodeck a lot more than. I anticipated. I kind of thought there was going to be that one episode about it. And then all of a sudden, like, I feel like every single episode we've watched since has mentioned it or you've mm-hmm. seen it. So I found that interesting that they're, they're just like, oh, this is going to be the coolest thing in the world that everyone's going to want to see. So let's beat it like a dead horse. Uh, the holodeck is, I mean, it's, yeah, but it's also kind of a, kind of a uh, character development thing. Um, in that you really, the reason the holodeck is used so much, and it's used a lot in every version of Star Trek from TNG on, Deep Space Nine a lot, Voyager, in that it's, it really, it does do some character development because you learn sort of what do these characters like? What are these people about? Without just saying, my name is Will Riker. I like jazz and bone and women. Like you really just got to see, ah, what? How would he? How would he like to relax? Ah, let's see, ah, jazz club. No, so it, no, it you nice say to... you say boning women, which really brings me up to an issue I have with the holodeck. Okay. So I they already, are... I already know what you're gonna say, and I know what my answer is going to be. But go ahead. Okay. Computer generated images. Yes. Okay. So everything in there is not real, obviously. It's not. It's not real, but you can still touch it. It's it's tactile, as okay. you saw by R- Riker playing the trombone. Okay, so you, you obviously know where I'm going. Go my ahead, question, me. my question is cleanup. Oh, so Riker, Riker, he was gonna see. He wanted to know her limitations of the image were of the lady, and she said, "I can be as real as you want me to be." So yes. let's say, hypothetically, they get down and dirty. It's yes. a computer-generated image. His body fluid. Who cleans that up? Where does that go? I don't know. Yeah, you really, thought you, were gonna, you really thought that was the question, didn't you? Yeah, no, no idea I re- where that was going. <laughs> I, I, really thought, I really thought I backed you into a... Not backed you into a quarter, but I thought I... I, thought I predicted that you were going to zig and you predicted my zig and you zagged right past it. Yeah, I don't I I figured they can have sex with the person, but I want to know it's a computer generated image. Once he leaves the holodeck, does everything just go to a blank room and physical matter doesn't just disappear? It would just splat right down to the ground. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I uh, really feel bad for the janitorial staff on the Enterprise. That's true. But yes, to answer your question, you can have sex in a hollow suite or in a holodeck with computer-generated uh, women. But no one knows anything about the cleanup. 
You don't see it at all in Star Trek The Next Generation, because it's a nice, wholesome show. You do see it in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Does actually happen in the show. So Interesting to know. Just fun fact, yes, hollow porn is a thing. Hollow, hollow porn? Hollow porn. Or would it be hollow prostitution? Hmm. Well, they're not paying them. Well, in, in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, you have to pay to rent the suite. Because it's it's more of it, they call it the hollow suites because there's like it's more like a like a series of rooms rather mm-hmm. than one deck. Ah, so I don't know if it'll be. Regardless, um, yes, the hollow suite does play a big part in this show. It will continue to play or in this episode, and it will continue to play a big part in the show. A couple times where it's a really important mission, and other times where it's just like. That'll be your in- the beginning of a scene. Like, ah, here's a character on a holodeck. Uh, and now they get called to the bridge. Because in the Star Trek world, um, holodecks slash just holographic entertainment um, has basically usurped television and movies as the ultimate form of entertainment. I mean, you get to immerse yourself within it. I can't see why it wouldn't be considered that. Yeah, you you can. I mean, you can. They do this all the time, uh, in especially later later seasons. They will custom make programs to like. I want to play through the Alamo, or I want to play through a James Bond movie, stuff like that. And that's. I mean, yeah, you're you're 100 percent right. If you live in a world where you can be in the story, watching a movie would feel boring, by comparison. If you've grown up in a culture where playing the movie, being in the movie, is is the norm. Yeah. Also, just for fun fact, do you know if uh, Jonathan Franks is actually playing the trombone? Uh, Jonathan Frakes. Frakes, Franks. I don't know. I don't know how to read that. I highly doubt it. Let me browse through Wikipedia a bit. Nothing. I don't see anything on the Wikipedia saying that Frakes was playing the trombone, which leads me to believe he wasn't. I feel like they would have made a special note that said, they wrote a trombone into the script to take advantage of the fact that he really can play trombone. Because um, they do do stuff like that in TV all the time, obviously. So um, I didn't see any uh, anything in there saying that that was the case. Interesting. So yeah, the uh, this episode turned out to be a lot of fun. Okay, so let's, let's break down this episode's actual story here. Um, they go to a starbase, which, fun fact... Uh, the visual of the Starbase was recycled from Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. They reused a lot of those exterior visuals. I thought um, so. Because they had them lying around, and yeah, so why, yeah, why pay to redo it? And so they reuse a lot of the visuals. They go, they want to get an upgrade. The binars come in and go, beep, boop, 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 boop. We're going to go fix your, upgrade your computers. Everyone just goes to do some rest and relaxation, except Deanna Troy, who's just absent the whole time. The one episode where Deanna Troy could have actually been useful. Because she could have She's said, hey, there. I sense that the, that the fucking binars are up to something. Something's not right here. And then they would have said to the binars, hey, what's the deal? But she's just not in the episode. That's fine. Because she's completely worthless. Yeah. The, the, just the one like her freaking she... mother. So they all go, they do some, they go do some fun stuff. Tasha Yar and Worf go play some, some future sport. Picard says he's going to go read a book. Wesley's going to sit and watch, and he's going to awkwardly watch these little creatures do things. Um, Jordy and Data paint, which I'd like to touch on a little bit at the end, or later. Um, And Riker goes to hit on some women. Eventually, all the... Crew of the Enterprise freaks out and leaves because the warp core is destabilizing. They fly away with the Enterprise, and then Riker and Picard say, "Ah, something's up." They go, realize that they needed to get that the whole thing the Binars were doing was stealing Enterprise to get data to their planet, data like a data set, not data the person, to their planet to restore things, and then they go back. So yeah, this was a pretty, like you said, a pretty a nice solid basis for, for a story. Nothing particularly dumb or confusing or typical season one stupidity. And it was just some just enjoyable character stuff all around. And I really liked at the end just that little um, that little note that um, Riker says when he says, you know, the, the Binars didn't tell the Federation what their plan was because they, were, they feared they were going to be rejected. They said, well, they, we could have said yes. 
And then Riker said, well, I guess they never even thought of a compromise because they're based on binary. And so to them, they would have only experienced a yes or a no. I thought that was a, that was a nice little cap to the episode. Let's talk about, you said Data and LaForge. Let's talk about that for a second. Yes. Data and LaForge, despite Riker's weird little joke about a blind man teaching an android to paint, that'll be good in a book somewhere. This is the first episode where we see them just kind of just palling around. And I just wanted to point out that this is the first time we see them palling around. Um, because Data and LaForge are besties, and it's delightful. I like that. I thought, again, I originally thought Data was lame. But, you know, as you know, I have come to really understand the character and what he's worth. Mm -hmm. So now when he says stuff that is dumb, I find it humorous as the way it was supposed to be intended. Like when he always almost finished with his painting, he says, "Now I'm waiting for inspiration." Like as a as a as an android, he can't possibly get inspiration. Yes, but I just think it's funny that his humor has come a long way from there, and it just flows better. So you're like, "Oh, that's hilarious." He can't get inspiration, but he says it anyway because he wants to be more human. Yes, and he, it's like I I don't even know if he knows what. I mean, I'm sure at a logical level, he understands inspiration is the uh, when you are based on this and you want to do this. But, like, he says, I will wait for inspiration, but he has no idea what that means, if it's even going to happen to him. Yeah, it's adorable. Date is adorable. And that's the type of thing that I feel like would have made me upset if I want, that happened in an earlier episode, but now I'm understanding who he is. Mm-hmm. Now I feel like I'm learning something. Indeed. It was a straightforward episode. There was really not much to talk about. Yeah, just straightforward. Was, straightforward, was, decent television. Nothing great. Yeah, it was not bad. It was, it was pleasant. I, I will say I won't go as so far as it was good. I'll say it was pleasant. I it made my subway ride enjoyable. I had a little smile on my face when little things were happening here and there. I think and for me, it was a good decompressor as I cleaned and raked my lawn. To get after the episode, just lay down, watch it. It wasn't too much for me. I really see it was just a nice casual. I'm happy I did that. So unfortunately, there's not really much to talk about because I didn't feel like there was a lot of character development, as in they find themselves. I feel like we just found out a little bit more about what Riker likes, and that's all we really gained from the episode. Um. Two, two, little, two other things I just want to point out. Things we gained from the episode. We did gain a wonderful, wonderful YouTube video called Picard and Riker being cooler than everything for 10 hours. That came from this episode. So, um, What is that? that <laughs> it's a wonderful, wonderful video. I'll show it to you as soon as we're done with this. And then the other thing I noticed, Wesley, despite the fact, I mean, I would have preferred no Wesley. Let's be real. Let's but, be real. Doesn't really do anything wrong this episode. He says, oh, I notice a problem. Let me call someone who's qualified to handle it. Instead of getting then, me into a fucking pickle and and possibly get the death penalty. Yeah, because he would have tried to fix it and he would have blown up the ship and everyone would have died. It would have been fucking horrendous. And then so, their whole, and then their main computer on their planet, that would have blew up. And then the binars would have died. And then the car would have died. The bike would have died. Criminal. It would have been an accidental genocide. Fuck you, Wesley, you piece of shit. This is why you follow rules. So. Yeah, he sucks. But yeah, I think that really is it. Straightforward <laughs> episode, kind Nothing of Nothing really to talk about. Not much to say other than, yeah, it was uh, it was nice. It was fine. It was, it was, we got some, we got to see Riker. Riker's, uh, Riker hit on a girl in a jazz club. We got to see... Him and Picard save the day, and the binars go bleep, bloop, bloop in, in binary, and that's that's that. That's that. What are we in so, for next week? We are watching the episode Too Short a Season. I That is clearly not about this show. Uh <laughs> because we're only halfway through the season. <laughs> I don't remember. I'm just scrolling through the Wikipedia right now, and I have no memory of it. Yeah, I don't remember anything about this episode, so we'll see what that has in store for us. All right. Other than that, we hope you enjoyed. 
If you've enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, do any of that feedback stuff that lets us know how we're doing, let us know your thoughts, and we will see you next time. Our Favorite Frontier is hosted by Alex Russo and Nick Caledona, edited by Alex Russo and produced by Nerdy Inc. Be sure to follow us on YouTube to catch all of our videos, as well as like us on Facebook, Twitter, and whatever other social media we have.